So in this video, we're going to cover multivariate charts. Now, one of the goals of Lean Six Sigma is to reduce variation. So the process is more consistent and multivariate charts can help us analyze that variation. Now, before we dive in, let me mention, if you're interested in a free Lean Six Sigma white belt certification course, you can access one at sixsigmasociety.org. So multivariate analysis visualizes different sources of variation or classes of variation, and we'll talk about those different classes. It helps us narrow down our inputs causing problems, and it's great for early root cause analysis. Again, this is just another way to help us narrow down our inputs, We're analyzing the process, narrowing the x's or the inputs down. Now, just so you know, we're not going to walk through this multivariate chart right now, but this is an example of what one looks like. So we'll walk through them later and explain what each of these different things represent. But ultimately, this is what they look like. Now, before we take a look at multivariate charts, it's important to talk about common classes of variation or sources of variation, because oftentimes these charts are represented or broken out by these three classes. So the three classes of variation we talk about are within unit or positional. That's variation within a batch. Between unit is also called cyclical variation, and that's across batches. And temporal variation is shift to shift or across days or weeks. And so to kind of better understand these three types within unit, between, and temporal, let's think about making cookies. Okay, so let's say we make two batches of cookies over two days, two batches each day. If we see variation within batch one on day one, so within a batch, we call that within unit variation. And the question becomes, why are we seeing variation within the batch? So maybe some of the cookies are overcooked and some are undercooked. If we see variation there, then we know that, okay, maybe there's a problem with the oven. Maybe one side is hotter than the other. And so by understanding the class of variation, it can give us some clues about where a problem might exist. And then between unit variation is if we had between, on, on day one, between the two batches, one batch was overcooked, one was undercooked we'd ask, okay, so what changed on that day between batches? Did the temperature, temperature change of the oven? Did we allow one batch to sit out longer than the other? What was it that might have caused the variation between units? So again, it gives us some clues about what might our problem, where our problem might exist. Now, if we look at variation across days, that's going to be temporal variation. So maybe all day one's cookies are overcooked and all day two's cookies are undercooked we'd say, okay, what changed between days? Maybe we had a different chef or a different baker. Maybe that contributed to the problem. And so by understanding these three sources, so within unit, between unit, and temporal, it can give us some clues to help us start narrowing down our inputs that are contributing to our problems. And that's the whole goal here. Now let's start generating some multivariate charts. Now let's use this first scenario, car locks. So let's say we manufacture car locks. And we want to assess how different manufacturing plants and methods affect the usability and the quality of our door locks. So usability is about, is it easy for them to use and unlock the door? And quality is about, does it last long? So we've got usability and quality that we're looking at. And so let's say we gather some data. We look at the usability and quality ratings for our locks using three different manufacturing plants, plants A, B, and C and two different manufacturing methods, method one and two in this example. And so our plants and our methods are the inputs, and the usability and the quality ratings are our output. And so we can use, if we're using Minitab, this multivariate chart feature. So we list our response as the usability rating, and then our factors are the method and plant. So we'll start with just one output right now, usability, and we'll come to quality a little bit later. And then we generate the plot, it's going to look something like this for usability. So the line right in the middle is going to be the overall average across all methods and all plants. Now on the left panel, the three points on the left, that's for method one. And the panel on the right is going to be for method two. And so for method one, we see an average for plant A, plant B, and plant C. And the same thing for method two. And it looks like for method two, we have higher overall averages. Okay, and actually, I should point out here, just to make sure it's clear, if you look at this third point on the first panel, that's going to be the average for method one at plant C. Okay, 
Okay, so just to make sure we understand what each of these points represent, that is the average of all the locks that we're manufacturing using method one and at plant C. Now it looks like, again, though, method two, we have higher usability ratings. We're getting more usable locks on average at these locations. Now let's take a look at quality to see how that's different. So here's our quality ratings. Again, we've got a panel for method one on the left and a panel for method two on the right. And then for each of those methods, the average at each plant. And so again, it looks like for method one, the quality ratings were lower on average than method two. And so it looks like method two is gonna be our best option, our best manufacturing method. And the question is what plant is performing the best and it looks like plant A does pretty well in terms of usability and quality. So maybe that's what we want to stick with. And if we want to continue manufacturing at the other plants, maybe what we do is we say, let's take a look at what plant A is doing. What are they doing well? And can we take those best practices and apply them to plant B and to plant C? We certainly probably want to stick with method two for manufacturing these locks. They tend to be more usable and higher quality using that method. Okay, now let's take a look at alfalfa. Let's say we grow alfalfa and we want to assess how different varieties in fields affects yields of those alfalfa plants. We want a higher yield plant to get more return for our investment. And so let's say we do a little bit of a, uh, we gather some data here and we look at six different varieties of alfalfa and we grow those six varieties across four different fields and then we calculate the yield based on those different varieties in those different fields. And so the varieties in the fields are gonna be our inputs and the yield of the alfalfa is gonna be our output. Okay, so in mini tab, we're gonna list yield as the response, our output, and field and variety as the factors, our inputs. And here's the multivariate chart that we're gonna get out of this. And just take a second and, and look at what you find interesting here. And so each of the panels, there are six panels, those represent a different variety of alfalfa. And then for each of those varieties, they were grown across these four different fields. And it looks like field one tends to have the higher yields, field one, and also the first and the fifth variety tend to have the highest yields across the varieties. So it looks like field one and variety one and five have the higher yields. Okay, so we've got one and five, highest yielding varieties. And then we have field one with the highest varieties across the fields. That gives us some idea of what variety we ought to stick with and also what field we ought to primarily grow in. It might also be that maybe we take a look at field one and say, what type of soil are we using or what um, nutrients are being um, planted there, what's being applied to generate that type of yield, and can we apply that across our other fields? Okay, so we might want to learn from whatever's being done in field one and apply it elsewhere. Now let's take a look at a call center. Let's compare call center times at different locations using different methods. And this is where we really see the different classes of variation that we talked about earlier. With in-unit, between unit and across time, or temporal. Okay, so let's say we have an output, that's the call time, and we'd like to minimize that call time so that we can um, have more calls that are answered and less time spent, uh, that less time that customers have to spend waiting for a call. And so we have fewer drops or fewer customers leaving the call without ever getting an answer. And so we look at our call time, that's our output, and then we have inputs that show us different call centers, so in Georgia and Nevada, and different times, times of the day that we're checking this at 10, 13, and 17, and different methods for answering these calls. There's an expert method or a team method. Maybe with the expert method, we only have one expert on the line, even though we pay them more, or we maybe have a scenario where we have a team on the line all trying to address the issue. Okay, so if we take a look at this multivariate chart, if you look at the panels up above, it says 10, 13, and 17. That's across time or temporal variation. And then we see 
that within each of those panels, you have one line for Georgia and one line for Nevada. Okay, so Georgia is essentially one batch or within a batch, and Nevada is within a batch, within a location in this example. And so what we're seeing here is that Georgia, within Georgia, at 10 o'clock, you have a lot of variation. So one of those points represents the expert method, and another represents the team method. So you kind of have to stop and look at this for a second. You may feel free to pause this video if you want to um, just absorb it a little bit. But at 10, and within Georgia, it looks like the expert method is resolving the calls much, much faster. So that's the lower point here. It's a, a circle that's not filled in. That's the expert method. The average is about a little more than 130 seconds. With the team method, it's taking longer. It's over 200 seconds. And so we see a lot of variation within Georgia at that time in that location. Now, the other thing that you see here is, so you see for each of these locations, you see a line that shows the variation between different methods, expert and team. But you also see on this chart these red dotted lines that show the between unit variation. So between unit or between or across locations. So if you look at 10 o'clock, 10 a.m., Georgia, Nevada, they have some variation there. Okay, there's some variation there. Now, the green line, which crosses the three panels, shows you across time. It's a little bit different. So um, at 10 a.m., 13 and 17, how much variation is there? And it appears that because the green line is relatively flat compared to the other lines, that there's not as much variation across time. More of the var variation is within a unit or within a location or between units or across locations. And so if we look at this multivariate chart, we start to get clues about where to look for the problem. It helps us narrow down our inputs. It's kind of like the idea of baking cookies. If we know we're seeing variation within a single batch, we kind of get some idea of what input might be contributing to that problem. And so it's a way, again, to look at different sources of variation and start narrowing down the inputs. So thanks for watching. If you're interested in learning more, don't forget to check out the free Lean Six Sigma certification course at sixsigmasociety.org.